I just remember a CRST uh, van pulling in, you know, and bandages wrapped around people's heads, and you know, it was like, well, this is this is bad. We were gathered out in the atrium of the MOP building, watching this horrific rainstorm come through. Just couldn't believe what was happening. It felt like the longest storm ever. I was in a meeting and we knew that there was some severe weather planned or anticipated for our area, but um, we had no no idea the severity of which the, the storms were. I did have the guys um, go up, start the generators um, at the main hospital and over at the boiler plant just as precautionary because it did sound like uh, Marshalltown had some pretty high wind speed there. As the storm started approaching more and more, it uh, changed drastically really quick. Because these storms were coming through, we could take it as an opportunity to do an emergency preparedness drill with our teams um, over the noon hour while they were all documenting. And so we had just stopped in to the offices um, where our therapy teams kind of reside and we had said, you know, in case of an emergency, in case of an evacuation, what would you do? And within 20 minutes we were actually doing all those things and it was just the most ironic thing that could have ever come out of it, um, but we felt that we had prepared our teams as best as we could for it. I remember opening the stairwell next to our ED and I could hardly open the door. I could, I pull as hard as I could to try and get the door open. And in that stairwell, there was just this vortex of air just sucking away um, from, you know, bottom to top. We had no idea the extent of the damage across the entire city. And I had no idea of the extent over at the hospital because all communication was cut off. And so had no idea what was going on at the hospital, knew we didn't have electricity here. Obviously we lost both of our feeds from Reliant to the post storm, so we were on full generator power. So that becomes a full-time job for one staff member basically to monitor the generators and the emergency power system. So We had in our rehab gym, we had a lot of water coming in. We had a lot of equipment that we needed to move out of the way. We had a lot of patients that we needed to keep safe and keep calm. I just couldn't believe the amount of debris just laying everywhere. I mean, there's air conditioner units laying on the street. There was uh, debris from our resource center just spread all up and down Coe Co Road trees and branches down everywhere. It felt like it lasted forever and uh, once it was um, had settled down and kind of over I started getting some word from my neighbor across the street asking if I was still on vacation and that the damage at my property was bad. Many people their homes were either uh, had damage or in some cases there's a few people that had their homes almost destroyed and yet they're still here at work they're still here trying to take care of patients because that's what we do. You know, I knew from a personal perspective there was nothing that I could do at the house. Um, there was a tree on it and until the tree could be removed and it was going to take a crane, there was really nothing I could do there without power and I'm just one person and, and I could have spent hours and hours and hours and make very little impact, but what I could do is make a big impact at the hospital. It was hard knowing that I had my own, you know, issues to deal with, but I knew I could wait just a little bit because I knew I was needed here first. We tried just like St. Luke's always does, and it's one of the reasons I love working here. You you give support to the patient in front of you and the patients in the hospital. You give support to each other, and then at the end of the day, you give support to yourself. There was so much damage and so many lost so much. And so we did take some of the food that the foundation had offered because you know the grocery stores weren't, weren't operable and things like that. So it was an amazing support that the foundation was able to help with. The team members here are amazing. My staff here, I can't thank them enough. Um, they really pull together and really make everything happen. We're a tight group, and this is a big city, but this is a tight-knit organization. We love each other. We're a team, and we're united. I think overall my reflection is that the derecho, even though it was just a terrible incident and event in our history as St. Luke's, it just re-solidified why I'm so proud to work here. There is not another hospital or not another health system where you would see people come together the way that St. Luke's employees come together in the 
in the face of turmoil or an event like this. You know, I think one of the coolest things that um, happened to me that really gave me some great perspective was on my bedside stand, I had a little metal sign that said joy. And, cause that was like my motto. It had been a rough year the previous year. And uh, as we were cleaning up, it was the Friday after, uh, about a week and a half after the storm, once the crane had lifted the tree and we were going through all the debris in the bedroom and that joy sign was unscathed. And I'm like, that's a sign, you gotta find it. A week or two ago on a Wednesday evening, Carmen and I had the opportunity to go out rounding with the tree cart, which is always a really fun thing to do. But that night there was a thunderstorm warning and that was all that everybody wanted to talk about as we were making our way around to the departments and the units. And as the evening wore on and the warnings got more severe, you could feel that stress level going up. We all experienced something unlike uh, anything any of us had before a year ago on August 10th. This particular storm left everyone touched. And of course, all of this happened in the middle of a pandemic. And you had to ask yourself as an individual, and I know I ask myself as a leader, how much more can people take? How much more can people give? And yet, that's exactly what you did. You gave all the things you needed to give to keep our patients safe, to help our facilities get back up and running. You gave all the support that you could to one another in very difficult times. Everyone lost something during this derecho. It was a very difficult time, but yet you decided to choose hope. And for that, we'll forever be grateful. Thank you.